Today, we're tackling a beautiful problem from the International Mathematical Olympiad 2006, Problem 4. We're on the hunt for all pairs of integers x and y that satisfy this fascinating exponential equation. It looks complex, but with careful case analysis, we can unravel its secrets. First, let's explore what happens when x is a negative integer. Since x is negative, let's substitute x with negative k, where k is a positive integer. This substitution will turn our negative exponents into positive ones, making them much easier to handle. Plugging this in gives us an equation with fractions. Let's see what we get. Now we can see the fractions clearly. To combine these terms, we'll need to find a common denominator. The common denominator is 2 to the power of 2k. Now, for i to be an integer, this fraction must be a perfect square. Here's the key insight. The denominator, 2 to the 2k, is already a perfect square. It's 2 to the k, all squared. Since y must be an integer, this fraction must equal an integer squared. This means the numerator must also be a perfect square. More precisely, since the denominator is a perfect square and the result must be an integer squared, the numerator itself must be a perfect square. Let's call this required perfect square z squared. The key insight now is to see where this expression lives in relation to other perfect squares. We know that 2 to the power of 2k is a perfect square. Our expression is clearly larger than that. So z squared is greater than the square of 2 to the k. What about the next consecutive square? Let's compare our expression to the square of 2 to the k plus 1. Expanding this gives us 2 to the 2k plus 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1. Comparing our expression, we can see it's strictly less than this next square because 2 to the k plus 2 is less than 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1 for any positive k. Let's verify this algebraically. The difference between consecutive squares and our expression is 2 to the k minus 1, which is at least 1 for any positive k. This means z squared is squeezed between two consecutive perfect squares. And here's the crucial insight. An integer perfect square cannot exist between two consecutive ones. This is a contradiction, which means our initial assumption was wrong. Therefore, there are no solutions when x is a negative integer. Next, let's check the simplest non-negative case, when ax equals 0. Substituting x equals 0 into our original equation, we get 1 plus 1 plus 2. This simplifies nicely to 4 equals i squared. Taking the square root gives us y equals positive or negative 2. Let's double check this works in our original equation. Indeed, 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 4, which is 2 squared. So we've found our first two pairs of solutions. Finally, let's investigate the case where x is a positive integer. This is where we'll need some deeper number theory insights. Starting again with our equation, we'll perform a clever algebraic manipulation. First, Let's rewrite it to emphasize its quadratic-like structure. Our goal is to create a difference of squares, but the coefficients are awkward. We can fix this by multiplying the entire equation by a helpful number. Let's multiply everything by 8. This might seem random, but watch what it allows us to do. Rearranging the terms, we can see the beginning of a perfect square. The term 16 times 2 to the x squared is just 4 times 2 to the x all squared, and the middle term is exactly twice that base. We are so close to completing the square. We can split the 8 into 1 plus 7. This gives us the plus 1 we need to complete the square. The first three terms now form a perfect square. Simplifying 4 times 2 to the x gives us 2 to the x plus 2. Rearranging this, we get a famous type of Diophantine equation known as a Pell-type equation. The entire problem now reduces to this. We need to find solutions where this first term is of the special form 1 plus a power of 2. For clarity, let's define j equals x plus 2, so z equals 2 to the j plus 1. For positive x, 
we need j at least 3. Our Pell equation becomes z squared minus 8y squared equals negative 7. We need to find which solutions to this Pell equation have z of the form 2 to the j plus 1. To find all integer solutions to this equation, we can't just guess. We need the powerful machinery of Pell equations. First, we find the generator for all solutions from the related equation p squared minus 8q squared equals 1. The fundamental solution is 3, 1, giving us the algebraic unit 3 plus square root of 8. Next, we find the seed solutions to our actual equation by testing small values. By inspection, we find two seed solutions, 1, 1, and 5, 2. Every solution is found by starting with a seed and repeatedly multiplying by our generator. The first family gives z values, 1, 11, 65, 379, and so on. The second family starts with 5, 31, 181, continuing infinitely. Now we check which of these z values can be written as 2 to the j plus 1. z equals 1 gives 2 to the j equals 0. Impossible. z equals 5 gives 2 to the j equals 4. This works with j equals 2. 11 minus 1 equals 10, which is not a power of 2. z equals 65 gives 2 to the j equals 64. This works with j equals 6. All z values follow this recurrence relation. Advanced modular arithmetic proves no other solutions exist. The case z equals 5 gives us x equals 0, confirming our case 2 result. The case z equals 65 gives us x equals 4. This is our new solution for case 3. Now let's find the corresponding y value for x equals 4. Substituting x equals 4 into our equation. 1 plus 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 9th equals y squared. This gives us 1 plus 16 plus 512 equals 529 equals i squared. Taking the square root gives us i equals positive or negative 23. This confirms our solution for case 3. So case 3 gives us the solution pairs 4, 23, and 4. Negative 23. So after exploring all possible integer values for x, we can now state our complete set of solutions. The integer pairs x and y are 0, 2, 0, negative 2, 4, 23, and 4, negative 23. These four solution pairs represent all possible integer solutions to our exponential Diophantine equation. What started as a complicated exponential equation was tamed by breaking it down into cases. Direct calculation for x equals zero, and a transformation into a Pell equation for positive x revealed the structure. While the complete proof of uniqueness for positive x requires advanced Pell equation theory, our approach demonstrates the key mathematical insights behind this beautiful IMO problem. Thank you for joining me on this mathematical journey through this beautiful IMO problem. The interplay between algebra, number theory, and careful case analysis shows the elegance that emerges when we approach complex problems systematically. Until next time, keep exploring the wonderful world of mathematics.